Most people in 3D printing start with PLA and work their way up to ABS, assuming each step means more toughness. But is that actually true? Today we're testing four of the most common 3D printing materials to find out just how tough they really are. PLA, PLA Pro, PTG, and ABS. And the results might challenge everything that you thought you knew. In 3D printing, most of us start with PLA. It's simple, beautiful, and it's everywhere, and incredibly versatile. But it's brittle. As we learn, we graduate to something tougher, usually PETG. It's more practical, more durable, and far less brittle than PLA. And eventually, we move into more advanced filaments like ABS, long considered the standard for functional strength. Now we wanted to know which of these materials actually holds up best when pushed to failure. So we printed four identical helmets, same model, same slicer settings, same number of walls, top layers, bottom layers, and infill percentage. The only thing we changed was the filament. The helmet model is the Bad Batch Wrecker helmet from Galactic Armory, and it was scaled to about 75%, only because of time. It was about a 24-hour print at full scale, but I wanted them done in a day, so at 75%, they only took about 12 to 14 hours. I printed them in Polymaker PLA, PLA Pro, PETG, and ABS. Each helmet has two walls, three bottom layers, five top layers, and 15% grid infill. And I printed them on a Bamboo Lab H2D, a Bamboo Lab P1P, and on a Chidi Q2. Now, as I sit here thinking about this, a good test would be the same helmets, same materials, but with different wall thickness and infill. But that's a different video. For the sake of clarity, the PLA helmet is teal, the PLA Pro helmet is blue, the PETG helmet is purple, and the ABS helmet is the neon green. We then stepped outside, set up the cameras, and subjected each helmet to a couple of brutal tests. Excessive heat and some direct impact. All right, now let's start with the heat. Now to be clear, this isn't some nerdy scientific temperature test. A propane torch hits nearly 2,000 degrees, so that's well beyond the glass transition temperature or safe use limits of any of the filament that we're using. But that's not the point. The test isn't about the numbers, it's about the behavior. How fast a material fails, how violently it deforms, and how long it holds together when things go completely wrong. And I think it's just kind of interesting to see how these different materials handle the torch. In fact, maybe we can make this a regular thing here on the channel, where we are testing and comparing different materials with the torch. Before I show each of you the helmets on fire, let's talk about heat resistance for a moment. Specifically, glass transition temperature, represented as TG. Now, PLA and PLA Pro both have a TG around 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. That means that they can start softening in something as simple as a hot car. PETG is a little bit better, typically in the 75 to 85 degree range, which makes it a more functional choice for prints exposed to moderate heat. Now ABS, it's way up there, around 95 to 105 degrees, which is why it's used for things like automotive parts and outdoor enclosures. I'm only giving you this for reference. None of it matters really, uh, because we are far outside those temperatures. Each helmet was placed on a brick pedestal, and a propane torch was mounted to an arm, and we aimed it directly at the side of each one. We gave every material about the same 30 seconds or so of flame exposure, and if it kept burning after that, we extinguished it with water. If you had to guess which material is going to fare the best, and which will handle the extreme heat the worst, if you think you have it figured out, drop a comment. Tell me which one will be the best and the worst. All right, back to it. PLA, as you'd expect, began melting almost instantly, sagging and dripping. It actually had that awesome Raiders of the Lost Ark look to it. And uh, ultimately we had to put it out with water. But I think the result is what all of us would have expected from PLA. PLA Pro resisted more than PLA, which I think falls in line with uh, its more advanced formula. It held up quite a bit longer, didn't behave nearly the same, it deflected more heat, and didn't instantly turn into a dripping, oozing mess. Now honestly, I have to say I was quite impressed. PLA and PLA Pro are very similar, but in this instance, not so much. PETG was far worse than both PLA and PLA Pro. It softened super fast, and a large hole formed almost instantly where the flame hit it but it self-extinguished the moment the torch was pulled away. 
very different. ABS, it flamed up the moment that torch touched it and it didn't stop. It produced a massive fireball, charred quickly, and continued to burn until it was doused. The damage was actually pretty intense and I was shocked that ABS did that. Now going into this, I would have guessed that ABS would have been a little bit more resistant to that flame, then it would have been PETG, then PLA Pro, and finally PLA. But in reality, PLA Pro performed the best, then PLA, then PETG, and finally, ABS took the most damage of all. Polymaker recently released a high temp PLA. Now comment below if we should subject that to the same torch to see where it stacks up. Okay, so now let's move on to the impact test. The reason we're doing this test is really simple. Impact is where the myths really start to show up. We've all heard that PLA is brittle, it shatters, it snaps, it's not meant for anything under real stress. And PTG, on the other hand, is supposed to be ductile. It's marketed as the go-to for parts that take a beating. And ABS, well, that's the long-standing standard for strength. But what we really wanted to know was where does this PLA Pro land in all of this? Is it just a slightly better PLA or is it something closer to the tough materials we graduate into? For this one, each helmet was placed on the same pedestal. Then we dropped a 10 pound steel weight directly onto the crown from about four feet above. No surprise here, PLA shattered. We all kind of expected this. We've all dropped something made of PLA or snapped something in half. PLA is just very brittle. Now from the weight, a massive hole opened up on impact, but mostly contained to the location of the impact. Now, PETG, this shocked me. It failed catastrophically. The crown caved in with a huge hole and deep fractures across the sides and front. Now, if I was a gambling man, I would have put money on it, just denting or cracking slightly, but to have it fail more than PLA, that's nuts. Now, as far as ABS goes, totally what I expected. Um, it held its ground. It dented, but it didn't break. Um, it stayed together. Impressive, actually, that ABS is that tough um, when it comes to impact resistance, especially from a 3D printer. Now, here's where it gets interesting. PLA Pro has once again surprised us. It dented, but less than ABS. What? Seriously, no catastrophic failure, just one clean hit, and the PLA Pro absorbed that damage so freaking well. Super, super impressed, very surprised. Now, we totally expected ABS to dominate the impact test, but what we didn't expect is PLA Pro to come out the clear winner here as well. Sometimes in 3D printing, there's this idea that once you move beyond PLA, you're leveling up. That PLA is where you start, and filaments like PETG or ABS are where you go once you know what you're doing. But what these tests showed us is that progression doesn't always mean improvement. The truth is, some of the most well-rounded and durable filaments aren't necessarily the ones that are the hardest to print or require an enclosure. Sometimes, the strongest choice is the simplest one. PLA Pro surprised us. It handled fire better than ABS, it survived impact better than PETG and ABS, and it did it all while being incredibly easy to print. No enclosure, no warping, no special slicer settings. It's just forgiving, it's accessible, and it's most importantly, tough. In fact, the brackets holding up the entire studio's filament wall, thousands of pounds of weight for years are all printed out of PLA Pro. Now that doesn't mean PLA Pro is perfect. It's more expensive than standard PLAs, and it still has a relatively low glass transition temperature of around 60 C. That means if you leave it in a hot car or you use it for something exposed to prolonged heat or direct sunlight, it's going to deform. Now, it's not the right choice for outdoor prints or parts that are constantly exposed to high temperatures, but indoors, for toys, arts, crafts, decorations, brackets, prints under mechanical load, or any part that needs durability without specialized environmental resistance, then PLA Pro is kind of a rock star. It's strong, it doesn't shatter, it handles stress and impact far better than you'd expect, and it lands right in that sweet spot where printability meets performance. So maybe the journey isn't always from beginner to advanced. Maybe it's about finding the filament that works best for the job, and sometimes the one that prints the easiest is the one that performs the best. Oh, and don't forget, I also host the biggest 3D printing show on Twitch. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific, we go live, give away 3D printers, filament, all sorts of fun things, and we have a blast with our community. So you should join us over there. We'd love to have you.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And a huge thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this without you. Oh, and YouTube thinks you're going to like that video. So go watch it. We'll see you in the next one.